Well, this is a video response to Michael. Michael the, a the Christian. Michael. Or is it Michael the Atheist? Or Michael the Agnostic? Michael the Deist? Michael the... You see, that is the one great thing that came out of this video, Michael. You really illustrated very well that it shouldn't matter one iota what it is a person labels themselves at. And, okay, you put it the way the way you put it was like, you know, you should listen to what a person says. Okay, I elaborate a bit on that when I say, you know, it's not important what it says in a person's holy book, for example. It matters what happens between that person's ears. In the end, a Christian is not just a reflection of their holy book. A Christian is somebody who has read the Bible, supposedly, but by reading it, has interpreted it, formed their own opinion about what is actually being said in it, chooses to ignore certain parts of it, chooses to liberally reinterpret other parts of it, but builds their own model of reality, their own morality, their own ideas around it on that basis. And in the end, the only way to figure out what a Christian a Muslim or an atheist even is really all about is by engaging in conversation with them and finding out what they really think and I must say I do like you as a person Michael absolutely you know whether you are an atheist or a Christian or a whatever doesn't really matter because you know you certainly seem to be one of the really tolerant people here on YouTube and somebody who certainly you know, will not engage in condemnation or anything like that. However, there was part of that video, even though overall it was well worth the five stars I gave it, there was part of that video that really did kind of niggle at me and annoy me. And it actually happened fairly early on in your video. When you started talking about, you know, don't be quoting the Bible at me, I've read the Bible, that sort of thing. Don't be you know, what are you atheists worried about, you know, the way you said it, okay. But you're an atheist, which means you don't believe in it anymore. Get back to that in a minute. What you don't believe in doesn't hold any power over you. Uh, no, 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 Michael, sorry, sorry. But you lost the plot there for a second. Or a couple of seconds, anyway. First of all, about quoting the Bible, it is perfectly valid to quote the Bible at somebody, depending on what the topic of conversation is, of course, and what sort of a person you're talking to. For example, if you're talking to a biblical literalist, it is perfectly valid to point out such contradictions as, for example, the fact that the four Gospels all report different final words of Jesus. Yeah? That is the nail in the coffin, or one of the many, many nails in the coffin, of a literal interpretation of the Bible. So you, when you are talking to a biblical literalist, then it is perfectly valid to use such Bible quotes to point out how fallacious the arguments are. Similarly, for example, if you are talking to somebody who insists on saying that God is goodness personified, it is perfectly valid to, first of all, based on your own innate sense of morality, and Bible quotes showing God to be a megalomaniacal, you know, mass murderer, for example, to show that you cannot buy into that claim under any circumstances. The fact that you don't believe in a god as an atheist doesn't matter. It's like discussing a novel in that sense. It is perfectly valid to talk about a novel and express your opinion that the main character of that novel is a vicious bastard, based on your own sense of morality and what the novel describes that character as doing in the story. So it is perfectly valid to quote the Bible at a Christian. And it is entirely fallacious as a Christian 
to assume that you have a better grasp of what it says in the Bible than an atheist who has also read the Bible. And it will not simply not do to dismiss an atheist's using Bible quotes simply because they are an atheist and they are supposedly talking about something that they don't believe in anymore. Similarly, I do not buy the whole argument that what you don't believe in doesn't hold any power over you. Sadly, that is far from true. Because in an interaction where one person talks to another person about what they believe in, it is what the person talking believes in that determines how important it is what they are talking about. If you tell me that, again, you are not one of these people, Michael, but there are people who are, and if one of those people tells me that I deserve, after I die, to suffer eternally, then I am quite in my rights to make a huge issue out of that. Because you know, this is something that's really funny, because a lot of people have to do this. They focus on the fact that the suffering is to be inflicted on me by an imaginary friend, or in a period in which I don't exist, because I'm dead, so I can't suffer, so what am I worried about? You see, I don't even go there when I'm listening to crap like that. What I hear is, you deserve to suffer. And that is the sentiment that I should take heed of, and I should be annoyed by, and I should be worried about. Because whether the suffering is to take place in La La Land by an imaginary friend doesn't matter to the person uttering those threats, as I would call them. The threats are real. They are talking about something that they believe in. And the suffering that they believe I deserve is suffering that they think is real. And I have every right in the world to respond to that and to be upset by that, to be annoyed by that and to argue against it. Whatever a person thinks about another person makes a huge difference in how that person interacts with another person. If you believe that a person is a piece of human garbage, you're not going to treat that person the same as if you, if you put them on a, to a pedestal and you worship them. Don't even try to tell me otherwise, Michael, because you know it isn't true. And because of that, it does make a difference. It is important that you keep into account, you listen to what a person says in the context of what they believe in, not in the context of what you believe in yourself. If you do that, you end up missing the point. Other than that, like I said, it was a very good video. The main message of the video was right on the button, and I totally agree with you on that. And I just wanted to make sure I ended on that positive note, because I did give it five stars.